Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Lyubta Lazarevich. I am one of the sales engineers working in EMEA. And thank you for joining me on my presentation where I'm going to talk about some Bloom tips and tricks. So basically, what I'm going to talk about today is talking about you know, what is a good data model and why is it important in Bloom and how you can help make that work. And then we're going to talk about six generic patterns that you can use to explore your data in Bloom. So very, very quick sort of um, extraction of uh, what, what a data model is. So effectively, a data model, much like a model is a representation of, of a thing or a concept, a data model is a representation of how data is going to be used in a process or a domain or you know, how we're planning to use it. So a very brief anatomy of a graph data model. We have this concept of an entity, so this could be a business concept, and this business concept is what we call, you know, this, this entity is a node in the FJ. Our nodes are going to have a label or category name, so this is a type, so if we're thinking about business concepts, we could have a node which is of type customer, we could have a node which is of type product. We're then going to attribute these nodes. So we can provide things like a customer's going to have a name, a product's going to have a type, and so for expanding it. And last but not least, we also want to describe how these you know, entities are connected. You know, and we call this a relationship. And there is a type of relationship. So in this example, a you know, business concept, an entity of customer, buys a business entity or a concept of product. So why am I talking to you about a graph data model in Bloom, in a Bloom talk? Effectively, a great Bloom experience is dependent on a good data model. Because what, what Bloom does when it starts up, it will look, it'll talk to the database, it'll have a look at the schema, and you want to make sure that the kinds of entity, the node names that you use are close to the domain. You know, they represent what, what the domain user would refer to them. The relationships not only link entities together how you'd expect them, but the relationship type that you use to describe them is apt and you know, logical to deduce. And also, the path, so the journey that you're going to use to connect to your business entities needs to be logical to deduce. So for example, if we wanted to have a look at uh, how product catalogue related to a customer, you know, we would deduce that you would go along the route of a customer buys a product which is part of a product catalogue. So all of these good elements you know, will help make the Bloom experience really good. And as people and experts of your domain, you can work with your technology teams to make sure when they're capturing the requirements from you and understanding what your, you know, what, what your domain looks like, they can build a data model that is representative of that. So moving on to the next part where we start to think about some generic ways of exploring data, I'm going to talk, talk to you and show you through some bloom patterns that you can use. So, these, you know, these are patterns where we can start to think about how we can use natural language to pull these things out. We can start to explore our data using our domain knowledge. And I'm also going to flag up some be aware situations where when you're writing your Bloom patterns to explore your data, you may have situations that you weren't expecting to come up. And just to quickly introduce the data we're going to be looking at, I've taken some Olympic data from Kaggle. And we've built out a data model here, and effectively what we've got is we've got this concept of a team. So team is the sort of centre of our universe, centre of our model. So we've got an athlete, and an athlete is part of a team. So that team could be, say, a hockey team, or it could be an individual in the sprint team. The team competed in an event. The team may have won a medal. The team was representing or re represented a country. And they participated in Olympic Games, which was held in a city. So the first balloon pattern, getting a specific path. So in this situation, we've got a defined start point. We know where we want to look. We know what question we want to ask. And we have a, you know, or we have a specific pattern. So for example, I may want to ask the question, what games and teams did the British row Helen Glover compete in? Now, the thing with Bloom, so we've got here 
uh, a property, the um, relationship in red, and the you know our, our business term, our node type in green. And the thing that Bloom will do as well is Bloom will fill the gaps, so you don't necessarily have to put in all of the relationships and things. If you know, as a domain knowledge, if you understand well, I know that I've got athlete that's linked to a team that's linked to a game. We can do that, and Bloom will fill those gaps for you. So let's have a look at that in Bloom. So effectively, we've got we, we put in our pattern here, and we get our response back. So we can see that Helen Glover competed in uh, the rowing event. So this would be the, the women's pairs. We can flesh this out, and we can see that she competed in both London 2012 and Rio de Janeiro 2016. So the next thing we can look at. We can also do shortest path, and this is great when we have a start point and end point, and we just want to know how these two items are joined. And no, we don't care how, we just want to know what is the shortest path joining them. So the first to be aware in this is this will be the shortest path that is available in the engine, and something may come up that you weren't suspecting. So for example, if we we're looking to see how two customers may be joined by a product by product catalog, they may be joined because they're from the same country. So we're going to do this with this example. So if we do. So we're going to have a look at the shortest path between American tennis player Serena Williams and British rower Helen Glover. And shortest path is a built-in function within Bloom. So we just do this. So we bring in this path, and straight away we can see something interesting here, which is they're being linked by this team here. So if we have a quick look, this was a, a joint team in the 1900s where they had a tennis double. So we found the link, but that wasn't necessarily the path we were expecting. So, which brings us on to our third pattern, which is, okay, so we've got a defined start point and a defined end point. And what we're going to do is there's actually a specific path we want to push this down. So we know there's specific um, categories or um, categories that we're looking to look through. And we just want to understand the different paths down this particular route between these two, these two points. So let's have a look at that. So we bring back Helen Glover and we're going to bring back Serena. Oops, and then we can do. So there we go. That's more like the kind of thing we want to understand. So straight away we can see that they, they both competed in these Olympic Games and we start to see where Serena Williams was competing in these tennis events at these two Olympic Games and the two rowing events that Helen Glover was competing at. So, another really powerful pattern that you can do in Bloom without having to write any cipher queries is exploring depth. Now this is really powerful when we want to try and get an understanding for any hierarchies in our data or any dependencies. So for example, if we're looking at a supply chain and we wanted to understand, we've got a starting point of you know, an organization and an organization has a supplier and the supplier has a supplier and the supplier, supplier has a supplier and so forth. And we can do this in Bloom. And effectively what we do is we'll have some kind of repetition in the pattern going on in our phrase. So the example that we're going to do here this, in, within our data set, this is going to show us dependencies of players within teams, most likely. So we're going to have, for example, uh, a Japanese hockey team comes up where you'll have a player playing across different Olympic teams and we can start to see which events were dependent on certain players. So I'll come back to the be aware. So I'm just going to put this in and then we'll come straight back. So I'm going to quickly talk about the be awares and we come back. So 
things to be aware of. At the moment, Bloom ignores direction. So when we talked about our example of having an organization and suppliers, the organization could be a, a supplier to another one. So when you run the query, check the direction of the relationships when the results come back. The depth is dependent on how often you repeat this pattern. So if you want a bigger depth, keep re repeating that pattern. And another thing to bear, as well, bear in mind as well is if you've got nodes with relationships to each other and you're doing a depth one, they will cycle round. So just a few things to be aware of when you run this. So we've got our results back. And if I zoom in here, we've got a nice example of the Japanese women's hockey team. And you start to, get, you start to see uh, players, and these teams being dependent on players. So you've got these players sitting through multiple different teams. So here you've got two, and this one you've got three, and so forth. So we're getting a nice idea of starting to see the dependencies in the data. So the next two patterns I'm going to cover, and then we're going to come back to a demo of these. And these are two examples of how you can start to bring back cardinality. So how do we bring back more than one of in our data? And the way how we do this, so we have this sort of palindrome pattern going on to be able to do more than one of. So for example, here, the question we're asking is, tell me which cities have, hold, have held more than one Olympic Games. And we do this effectively by having sort of the thing that we want to know if, if they've had more than one of in the middle, so like our pivot point. And again, as we mentioned before, we can strip out the relationships and Bloom will fill those gaps for us. But also, we, we may want to know more than one of, but the thing that we want to know that's more than one of isn't directly joined in a path, so we have to stretch the path out. Again, that's not a problem. So we use the same principle. So for example, if the question we're looking to ask is, show me athletes that have won more than one gold medal. So again, we have athlete in the middle, and then we just walk the path. So we know that athlete is part of a team that won a medal of time gold. And then we just repeat on the other side, athlete, part of a team, won a medal of time gold. So okay, again, the same be awares. If you have, uh, again, sort of nodes talking to each other, you may have that recursion pattern. And another thing with what Bloom does for performance is it may put some internal limits on if you've got a very large data set to improve the performance of the data come back. So you may get a subset coming back. So let's ask these questions. So the first one was um, cities that have held more than one game. So again, which is the games, city games. And we bring those back. So as a nice example, we can see Lake Placid has held two Olympic Games. We've got Athens held three. And last but not least, let's find these athletes that have won more than one gold medal. So let's zoom in and pick an athlete. There we go. Yes. So here we go. We've got Masaroni Yusa, who was in the Japanese uh, men's swimming team, and you can see he's won two gold medals. So get an idea of how we can do the cardinality queries. So in summary, a data, data model is a representation of how data is going to be used in a process or domain. And the better, you know, better described your graph data model is, so you're using labels that are reflective of the business terms in your domain, the relationships are descriptive of how these entities connect together and so forth, the better the Bloom experience is going to be. And you have a massive opportunity to work with your technology teams to make sure that the graph data model produced is accurate to your domain. And we've also gone through some generic bloom patterns that you can use to ask different types of questions with your data without having to write any cipher queries. Thank you very much.